In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome digital whip pan transition with chromatic aberration or a glitch effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and you've got two images or two videos imported, your first job is to just get these next to each other on the timeline like this. So to begin with, they should both just be sat next to each other on layer one. But we're just gonna to go to the end of the first image We'll go back on ourselves one keyframe, so left arrow, create a brand new keyframe on the position, and then we'll go 12 frames to the left. And we'll just create a new keyframe on the position. Then we'll go to that last keyframe, that second keyframe that we just created, and we're just going to pull the position all the way over to the right. So we're just going to take that off screen. Now we'll just move that keyframe to the very end. Now we'll drag the image on video layer two up. We'll hover over that first keyframe that we created on image one, and we'll drag image two over to the cursor. Now again, we'll just create a new keyframe on position. We'll go to the end of the first image and create a new keyframe on the second image. Then we'll go to that first image and we'll just pull the position all the way over to the left like this. So as you can see, that is our whip pan transition. If you wanted to make any adjustments to the speed of this, then you just have to make sure you move the keyframes at the same speed. So I'm just going to hover over the keyframes on image one. We'll go roughly three quarters, two thirds of the way through, and I'll pull that keyframe over to the cursor. And then without moving the cursor, I'm just going to go to image two and I'll move that second keyframe over to the cursor again. So there's the whip pan but I preferred it how it was before, to be honest. So I'm just going to undo that. Now this works fine, it does what it needs to do, but it doesn't really have a lot of character. So I'm just going to add some motion blur to begin with to take this to the next level. So to do this, I'll go to effects, search for directional blur. I'll drop that to image one. Then I'll go to that first keyframe on the position that we created, create a new keyframe on blur length. We'll go to the end minus a few frames and we'll just increase the blur length all the way up to around 50 60 and then we'll change the direction to the direction that it's traveling so that would be 90 degrees in this one and as you can see it looks like we've created some motion blur so we've got a little bit more character there now we just need to create the same on this image so we'll go through to the point where it stops moving so last keyframe drop that direction of blur on and create a new keyframe on blur length at zero then we'll go back on ourselves and increase that all the way up to something really intense, maybe 100. And we'll change the direction to the direction of travel again, so 90. And when we play that back, you can see that looks a lot better now. All of a sudden we've got this nice motion blur there. If you wanted to as well, you could make the motion blur on the bottom layer a little bit more intense. There we go, we'll pull that all the way up to 150. And that feels really intense now. Now this step is just going to add a little bit more character to the motion of the animation. We're just going to highlight all of the keyframes on the bottom layer, right click one of those, go to temporal interpolation and select ease in. Then we'll do the same on the top layer, highlight all the keyframes, right click temporal, ease in. Now when we play this back, you'll notice that looks a lot nicer. There's a lot more character there. And the reason why is because rather than just starting when the keyframe comes in and stopping when it ends, it's just going to ease into each one of those. So it's going to accelerate in and de-accelerate out. So it looks a little bit more natural. Now, before I carry on with the video, I'm first just going to take a quick break to talk about the Brooker Films courses. And in particular, I'd like to talk about the Premiere Pro course. It's a three and a half hour course and it teaches you everything you need to know about Premiere. So this covers import, organization, creating titles, green screen, multicam, and so much more. So if you're interested in watching the Brooker Films Premiere Pro course, then click the link in the description below. Now, back to the video. So now we've got our whip pan transition created in Premiere. Now we need to add the chromatic aberration effect onto this transition. So in order to do that, we're just going to highlight both of these layers. We'll right click one of those and we'll just select nest. And we can call this transition. Now from here, we want to make two copies of this. So we should have three layers. 
and you can either go Command C, move over Command V if you're on Mac, do that twice so you get two copies. Or if you're on Windows, that's Control C, Control V. You can do that. Or alternatively, if you're on Mac, you can just hold Option down, drag one onto two, and then drag two onto three with Option still held down. Now from here, you want to go into Effects and search for RGB. And you should see Color Balance RGB. You want to drop that onto your top layer. And we're just going to change the green to zero, blue to zero, and then red can stay at 100. If for some bizarre reason it changes to 39, by the way, completely fine, don't worry about it. Then we go onto the middle layer, we'll drop color balance on and we'll change the red to zero and the blue to zero, so green can stay at 100. Then we'll drop color balance on the bottom layer and you've probably guessed it by now, red zero, green zero, blue 100. So if I turn off each layer, you can see we've got a red, green and a blue channel. Now from here, you want to select the top layer We'll go to the blend mode under opacity and we'll change this to lighten or screen. So this is screen and this is lighten. You can see there's no difference there. Then we'll go to video layer two and we'll change that again to screen. And now you can see we've got our original image back. However, if I turn one of these off, you can see it all of a sudden doesn't look right. So we've set up the footage now for the chromatic aberration effect. Now we just need to change the position. You'll notice if I change the position, we get in this nice glitching effect. So we'll just go through to the start of that movement. We'll create a brand new keyframe on position on the top layer and the middle layer. Then we'll scroll through to the end of that action. Again, a new keyframe on the middle layer, new keyframe on the top layer. And then we'll go halfway through that action. And I'm just going to pull the position on the top layer over to the right a little bit. Then we'll just go to that middle layer and again, at that same point, I'm just going to move that over to the right or I could pull it to the left to make that a little bit more different. It's completely up to you. And let's see how that looks. That looks really nice. Although you could make this even more intense by just dragging that even further across. And that is how this looks. The problem though is you can see the edge of the frame here. So we're getting this really cool glitch effect, but we're seeing the edge of the frame. So to fix that, we can just highlight all of those layers. We'll nest those into their nested sequence again. So we'll call this chromatic transition. Then we'll just convert those keyframes to easy ease keyframes. And when we play this back, you'll notice we're zooming into the right. So it hides what's happening on the left. And all of a sudden we get this really intense chromatic aberration whip pan style transition. You could make that scale in even more intense if you wanted to add a little bit more character onto this transition. It's completely up to you. But that is how this would look. So as you can see, it falls back into place now. If you wanted to, you could delay those last keyframes so that you get this nice resting action at the end. And there you go, that is how you would create this whip pan transition inside of Adobe Premiere Pro with this chromatic aberration or glitching effect applied. Now, if you wanted to whip pan down to the left going up, it's exactly the same process, just follow that movement in the direction of travel. So when it comes to your directional blur, if you're going up, make sure your directional blur is going up because you want it to look like motion blur rather than a blur effect. And there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.